Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. I've been doing a video series demonstrating how to best use Denoise AI, Sharpen AI, Gigapixel AI, and Photo AI, not only as standalone applications, but as plugins as well. I have two videos done in the series so far, both of them on Denoise AI. In the first video, I demonstrated how to best use Denoise AI as a Lightroom plugin. In the second video, I demonstrated how to best use it as a Photoshop plugin. And today I'm going to demonstrate how to best use it as a standalone application. I have all of the videos in a playlist. In the description below this video, you'll find a link to that playlist. As I do them, they'll be added to the playlist. Also in the description below this video, you'll have a link where you could sign up for my newsletter. I have a free weekly newsletter. It goes out every Monday and in it, I write about photography. For example, in last Monday's newsletter, I wrote about why I feel focus is overrated. Yes, I actually wrote about why I feel focus is overrated. Now there is a paid tier. If you choose to support my work by moving to a paid tier, you'll get an additional newsletter. It goes out every Thursday, sometimes Friday. You also get the occasional podcast, only about 12 a year. And you also have access to all the older articles I wrote in previous newsletters. And there is a chat area where you could talk about photography. For Thursday's paid tier level newsletter, I'm going to be writing about some spaces, the physical space, the depictive space, and the mental space and what they mean to your photography. Okay, let's get started. I mentioned that in today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how to best use Denoise AI as a standalone application. Now, very quickly, if you look at my desktop, you can see my desktop image is of this little bird. It's a dark-eyed junko. This is a totally finished, processed image. Also on my desktop is a RAW file. This is the unprocessed RAW file that I got that desktop image from. So we're going to use this. We're going to take this RAW file and send it into Denoise AI and get rid of the noise. So we're going to open up Denoise AI. And when you do, right in the middle is Browse Images. So we'll click on that. And on my desktop is that RAW file. It happens to be a Nikon RAW file. We'll open it up. Now, I mentioned in the previous videos, and uh, it's not changed here, to start, I like to be in this last view, it's comparison view. When you're in comparison view, you could look at four of the five AI models at one time. What I'm gonna do though, is go over to the navigator window and move this rectangle over the head of the bird and get some of that background in there. And I'm gonna wait for everything to render. So it's going across and you can see in the top left-hand corner, I have the standard AI model. Next to that, I have the clear AI model. And that one's not on auto. I like to put everything on auto. So I'm compar comparing apples to apples, oranges to oranges. Because I'm going to look at these four and see which one is best and see which one is worst. Because there's a fifth model. And I'll swap out that worst one for that fifth model that isn't being shown. So again, in the top left-hand corner is standard. That's on auto. Next to that is clear. That's not on auto. That's a bug in the app. It should stay on auto when I put it on auto, but it doesn't. So hopefully they fix that in the next release. The lower left is low light. We'll put that on auto as well. And then next to that is severe noise, and we'll put that on auto as well. Now the switch keeps coming off auto, but you'll notice that the actual adjustments stay the same, like this one. See, see the adjustments. Did. Oh. So we actually can do a comparison here. And just uh, looking at it, um, it actually looks like low light is the best. Now I got kind of my nose 18 inches away from my monitor and not sure it's rendering in the video where you could actually see which one's better. But that one looks like the best. And I would have to say that um, clear might look like the worst. So what I would do now, because I want to see that fifth model, which is called raw, which might be applicable because this is a raw file, is I'll make the worst of the four showing active by clicking on it. Then all I need to do is click on the fifth one that isn't being shown raw, and it will swap out that for raw. We'll take a look here. And that looks all right. And what I might want to do here is I want to zoom in maybe a little bit more. And I have to then again, wait for everything to re-render. And you can see in the lower left-hand corner, 
Everything has to get updated. And as I look at them, they're all really close, but it does look like raw is the best. Now, there is an alternate way you could do this if you maybe press for time or something like that. What you could do, and I haven't shown this in the previous two videos, is go to single view. And then over here where it says AI model compare, just turn this on. And that will automatically choose what it feels is the best AI model for the image you're doing. Uh, but what I found, it doesn't always choose the best. That's why I prefer to be in comparison view and look at four of the AI models myself and look at them and figure out which one is best, which is worst, and then swap that worst one out for the fifth one that isn't being shown. And that way, I think I get the, the best possible uh, rendering at the end. So it says raw too, though. So in this case, so it worked out. Now again, on auto, let it go on auto, see what it does. Now, um, when we used this as a Lightroom plugin, I mentioned that Lightroom's color noise reduction works great. And I use that in Lightroom and then I have it at zero here. Uh, because we're using this as a standalone application, do not forget about color noise reduction. Now, I don't really see any, tell you the truth here. Let's zoom in. I don't really see any, but it wouldn't hurt to just move this up a little bit. And really what I found is as far as color noise reduction is concerned, you don't have to move this slider a lot, definitely less than 25, usually somewhere around 10 and you'll get rid of all the color noise. Now uh, that's what I found. So right around 12 will be good. Now you can see it's a little bit blurred um, on that uh, desktop background that you saw. I actually sent that to Sharpen AI to sharpen it uh, after I was done into Noise AI. So uh, you could see how this is a little bit blurred. But you know what I did do is I did come in here and enhance sharpness a little bit here. You have to be careful because you'll, you could start to reintroduce the noise. And also this recover original detail. If you move that to the right as well, you'll start to bring some of the original detail back. But I don't know if you can see in the video, I'm start, I reintroduced the noise. So just leave that down there. Get rid of that noise. That's the most important thing. You always could use another app to sharpen, whether it's Lightroom, Photoshop, whatever app you're using, or you could use Sharpen AI to sharpen. And that's really it. I'm done. So now we're going to save image. Now this is the part that's important. Um, how do you want to save it? Uh, first of all, um, give it a file name, right? All right, so we'll just go with the default file name. Where do you want to save it? Well, save it to the desktop. Do you want to preserve the import set, input settings? So this is all these settings. You could click these little question marks or just hover over them and you'll see apply the source images file format, compression quality, and color profile to the output. So this is just the original Nikon file that whatever you had your camera set at, up as is the um, compression, uh, the quality, the color profile. If you used Adobe RGB in your camera or sRGB, that will all get preserved on the next file that you save. So we'll do that. We'll click Save Image. And it's just going to save it to the desktop. And you'll see that once we look at it, that it's a DNG file. So let me minimize this, get rid of that. And you can see it's right here. It's a DNG file. And this is our noise reduced image right there. So what we'll do, what I probably could do is I could open these like this. I think, well, we'll have to open them in Photoshop to do a true comparison. So what I'll do is I'll open up in Photoshop and then they'll open up in separate tabs and you'll see that I'll copy one, put it on top of the other, and then we could actually do it. So we're just going to open both of them. Them open. Okay, they're in separate tabs. Now this is the noisy one and this is the noise reduced one. So we'll take as this one, we'll drag it up to the tab here. And I'll hold the shift key down so it drops it right on top. Now you can see it's a little darker. We'll zoom in. And we'll move it over here. Zoom in a little more. All right. So this is the noise reduced image. 
and there's the original image. You can see it's a lot brighter, but you can see a lot of the luminance noise was white speckles. So when it got rid of the white speckles, it came back darker. Um, this is common. This happens a lot with any noise reduction application. So you can see how it's considerably darker. So there's the original image of the before, and there's the after. There's before, and there's the after. You could see it got rid of the noise totally. Now from this point, you could process it. In this case, since I'm in Photoshop, I would probably go up to the camera raw filter here, and then go to basic, and then I'd actually do some editing on it here. Yeah. I want to bring exposure up a little bit. Uh, like this real quick, this add some texture. As I mentioned, the desktop version of the image, I actually um, sent to uh, Sharpen AI to sharpen it, and I could do the sharpening here as well. Finally, just very quick edit on this. There we go. There's my fully edited, or at least partially edited image, uh, right like that. But then when I did a careful edit on it, this is what I ended up with uh, here. So that's it. That's how you use Denoise AI as a standalone app. Very easy to do. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.